Well, hello everyone, Dylan here. Happy Throwback Thursday, and the rotation leads us to a, my second Galador review. And this one is on on the Paul standalone figure and Euripides from 2002, of course. So now we'll just start out with Euripides, since quite prominent character in the show, of course. So, like, as you can see, as you can see, where his main position is, has the legs bent inwards, of course, like he's about to hop off and all. So, as a quite chunky character, and, or a lot of old pieces, like you'd often expect for these Galador figure. Which, of course, but although in his case, mostly just the body part that is a large, thick piece. Just like, as for the legs here. Well, just for the legs of which, which are kind of in a crouched down kind of position, but but also as you can see the uh, feet and everything else, the scaly effect really interesting. So it's quite well done, of course. And also for the bottom part of the feet, as he does have a few uh, stud connections to it, which, and of course, can fit any Lego stud surface onto it, but not clutched on, of course, just like you'd expect for most of these figures. There's, and also on his shins, does have these armor bits on to there, of course. And as for the body, which is kind of hunched over kind of position, but also but also some of it is kind of covered by this large armor bit here, which also has some nice detailing to it, of course. Just like if I remove the head bit, that's kind of how it is. So, sorry. And also, not sure why there's that other ratchet hole bit to there, but whatever. So as for the headpiece alone, uh, which which really well captures his in-show appearance, which is like with these uh, leafy bits to it, kind of frog-like since he is a frog being, of course, and also another. And just like what Allegra also had is as another connection bit in the top of his head, and which, does, which I find kind of useless to him, but yeah. But then as for the arms of which, as just the upper part of it, which looks to be done with some armor bit added to it, and also nicely detailed, sculpt, nicely sculpted to it, but also quite good. And also for the arms, lower arms of which, as you can see, like the rest of the figures, do have single swivel joint for the wrists, and also plenty of nice uh, detailing to it nice scaly effect there. Then as for the other armor which holding his uh, main staff onto it. You see quite nicely detailed. Oh which mostly a lot trans red going for it and also you can you know, if you can like have it hold, be held in some way. Well yes can have it held by other figures of the line of course but not sure about but suddenly downfall, probably not, although kind of barely much with walking, unless you can figure out how to use that, of course. Because, like, for this lower part of which, which, of course, has some gold painting to it, but although on mine, since I got it used off Bricklink, it's kind of paint kind of worn off, but I can live with it. As for this upper part of which, Quite nice gold uh, painting detail to it. And also, odd thing is the size of which, as compared to Nick Bluetooth here, which, as you see, quite short compared to him, but whereas, throughout, of course, in the show here, which is like 
a little bit higher than all that, but, and why? It's because it has the crotched legs, of course. There's, like, all the, like, the crotched down legs kind of bit works here, because representing him about ready to hop up and all. And, of course, on one episode, Nick Bluetooth kind of glitched these legs and hopped around with it and did a lot of slam dunks. And of course, would have been nice if they were two separate pieces, like the rest of these fig of the figures in the line, of course. But yeah, <coughs> and that's about it with the Ripidus here. And now on to uh, Nepal, of which also one of the main characters of the show, that was also quite interesting. That, but also, oh, which but also. Just like the Euripides figure, kind of stumpy, of course. So, like, as you can see, the that first of legs here, of which do look kind of small and a little spindly, but at least you can balance well on them. And that's for the torso bit, as you can see. Oh, whoops. Okay, and as for the body here of which, is if I remove this single bit of it, which is a softish, bendy material, and as for this uh, main body bit here, as you see, it does have a, a little connection bit to it, mainly just for that armor piece to be on there. And as for the arms of which, which are just a whole solid, you know, all single piece, but, and of course, which does have some nice, interesting, uh, fur sculpts onto there, and also the wrists of which, or the hands, also done quite interestingly with claws on them, and of course, does have the swivel joints for the wrists, of course. Oh, and also, of course, with this figure, you do get this little uh, pincher kind of thing to it. Yeah, it goes in and out, of course, and then then glitch it, of course. And does look kind of wonky and pointless on him, of course, unless if you also put it on Nick Bluetooth, of course. And as for and kind of like Euripides. This armor bit is this large uh, fur collar piece, also with some nice sculpt to it, to which you do oftentimes see on large box and all. So at least it's kind of a bit useful there. And of course, goes around to this other bit of it just pretty much perfectly. And as for the head piece of it, it does capture his in-show appearance quite well. But except, unlike with the other version of Nepal, it, the horn bits of which are in white instead of in bright blue, of course. And also the eyes of which, done quite interestingly on there. And also, the one of the main feature of it is that one of them is a lever feature. Push on it, and kind of it overdoes the goggle effect to it. Quite fun and interesting. So, like as you compare it to here's a little sneak peek to an upcoming Throwback Thursday is. The traditional version of Nepal, and as you can see, it does have some bright blue more often, even though this switch is the more common version of Nepal throughout the show. And although, in my perspective, I think this one should be included with the Nepal and Shimmel set, of which, and this one should be the standalone figure, but I think. 
or that's probably just me. I'm sure it's probably the same with some of you too. Good thing with the other big one of him does have the like ice staff, of course, and also does have some more uh, bright blue going for him with the whole spiky things, unlike in white, of course. Of course, but uh, not much else to say for this, but at least it's kind of fair comparison of the two, but yeah. And so now, on to the final verdict. Oops. So, overall, I think these of which are quite good figures for what they are. Like, get plenty of good detailing of both fur and scales on both of them. And also, some interesting good pieces for both. Uh, Euripides and Nepal here, and and of course Euripides does have some bit of bulk to him. Always nice to see, and although it would be nice if he had a, kind of extra pieces for the legs of which, but I can still kind of forgive how he came out, of course. But yeah, and also for Nepal here, I think he should have been the all blue version that came with the Nepal and Schimmel set, but of course that's kind of me, but also can kind of forgive it, but yeah. <coughs> and so now if y'all still have these sets from back in the day, well, I hope you had some good memories of them, and for those of you who haven't and still have access to these sets, I'd say definitely pick them up, eBay, Bricklink, whatever, and that is about it with this video, please like, comment, share, and subscribe, thanks for watching.